ಗನಾಧಿಪತ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಐ ಗಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಮೇಲ್ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಡೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಬಿನ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ರಿಸ್ಪಾಂಡ್ ಟು ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಫೈನಲಿ ವನ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಟು ಇಟ್ ಟುಡೇ ಐ ನ್ಯೂ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟ್ರಬಲ್ ವನ್ ಐ ರೆಡ್ ದ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಡ್ ಕಾಂಬ್ಯಾಟಿಂಗ್ ಸೆಕ್ಷುವಲ್ ಡಿಸೈರ್ you can't win <laughs> because sex is a law of nature sex is present in all bodies as kundalini it's your life force huh it's what keeps you alive without kundalini you ain't nothing <laughs> she's the power behind the throne So you're not going to get enlightened as long as kundalini is confined to the lower two chakras. And that's where we keep her. Huh? The whole society is organized to repress sexuality and keep it down. Huh? Why? Because the ancient kings in the tribal days wanted to outbreed the enemy as a military strategy. And so they got the priests in on the deal to preach that you have to overcome sex desire. <laughs> It's just like pouring gasoline on a fire. Huh? It's only going to make it stronger. Repression in general is not advice in fact in bhagavad gita krishna even says what does it accomplish huh? i'll tell you what when you reach my age huh, in your 70s you're going to be looking back and seeing oh why didn't i go for it while i still had the chance <laughs> because you'll have unfulfilled desires and that's a terrible way to spend your last days regretting the past No, that's not the way. In the Vedas, there are four things called purushartas. Purushartas mean the gain of a human being, of a man, purusha. The gain of a man is four things, dharma, artha, kama, moksha. And there's a reason they are in that order huh because there are four stages of life four ashramas brahmachari grihastha vanaprastha and sanyas so in the brahmachari stage of life one studies dharma studies and practices dharma under the guidance of a spiritual master and in the grihastha stage one gets married and engages in economic development artha artha means making money huh? let's be straight about it then after the children are grown and every business is finished huh vanaprastha retired life and in retired life a man and his wife are supposed to travel to holy places and basically they're they're freed of all responsibilities and then finally sanyas and in sanyas the man attains moksha and if his wife is actually faithful she does too so dharma artha kama moksha huh? this is the order of life this is the natural law uh, it doesn't mean anything that people don't observe it today or it's not popular or it's difficult or oops i missed brahmachari life oops dang <laughs> can't go back huh? all of that is just an excuse to be ignorant and neurotic because when you repress sexual desire you become neurotic the energy is stuck it can't go higher 
And because it can't go higher, you miss so many things. Huh? So, dharma, then comes artha, economic development. You have to have the money to support yourself, to be free of economic slavery, indentured slavery to some corporation. Uh, then, kama, uh, then you're free. You can do whatever you like. You can enjoy like anything and get it out of your system. And then, moksha, uh, you can give it up. And there's a very simple reason why this is so. That the sex energy has to complete itself. See, for the kundalini to rise to the next level, you have to have experienced everything, every desire, every kink, <laughs> every fantasy, everything that you ever want to do in sex. You should experience it. And then you will realize the great truth that sex doesn't satisfy you. No amount of sex, no quality of sex, no intensity of sex can satisfy you. Why? Because you're not this body. <laughs> Silly. You're not this body. So to get caught up in a whole web of religious ideas about uh, being pure and all this stuff. But that's okay when you're brahmachari. When you're brahmachari, yes, you should practice celibacy. And the problem is, once the sex habit is established, you have to go th through it to the end. That's the only way out. If you try to repress it, you only get sick. Huh? Why do you think there's so much heart disease and cancer and all these terrible chronic diseases? They didn't exist in the past. It's only because people are repressed and they're putting their neurotic, emotional, negative energy in different places in their body where it festers and becomes an illness, a chronic disease. So... <laughs> Once the sex habit is established, then uh, the fellow who wrote, he blames pornography. Well, it's not because of pornography. It's because you had no wisdom. You had no guidance. Huh? The parents are afraid to talk about sex. Uh, the school is not allowed to talk about sex. Uh, nobody's going to tell you the truth about sex because they're all ignorant and they're all in the same uh, terrible situation so by suppressing sex all you do is delay your sexual maturity and sexual maturity means I experienced everything I wanted to in sex and it still didn't satisfy me so I have to search further see there are seven chakras huh we're going to go over this when we get into Saundarya Lahari. We're going to get into all of this. Seven chakras. And each of those chakras controls a specific part of your life. So if the sex energy, the life energy, the prana, is confined to the lower chakras, your whole life is going to be about that. That's pashu. That's animal life. Huh? just to be concerned with sex and food, basically. Isn't it? So then what's beyond that? Beyond that is love, movement, freedom of expression, huh? having a, a beautiful mind, and finally ecstasy. These are the different chakras, and this is what they control or conduct. When the kundalini uncoils completely, she goes to the top of the head, the sahasra chakra, thousand-petaled lotus. And there you experience ecstasy. And we did a whole series on this. My God. Huh? The secret of the golden flower. This is the golden flower. Huh? Thousand-petaled lotus. Now, how do you experience that? 
Well, you first of all, have to get beyond sex. <laughs> That's for sure. Now, how do you get beyond sex? By experiencing it, not by repressing it. Because you need to have the experience, not the theory, not the idea, not the concept, hmm? not the words, but the experience that this animal life does not satisfy me because I'm more than an animal. Okay? But the experience is very powerful. It can be shattering, in fact, huh? that you finally get your, your fantasies, whatever they are. And they don't satisfy. <laughs> so at that point, you can let them go and go beyond. See, I don't believe in all these rules and regulations. That's Dvaita Vada. Uh, you can practice Dvaita Vada when you're young and you think you're making progress. But then you get a little more mature, a little more intelligent and experienced, and you realize hey, this is bullshit, <laughs> that no set of rules and regulations is adequate to deal with life because life is constantly changing and constantly presenting you with new and unprecedented situations. So as you mature, as you gain economic development, especially, you realize that, wow, I don't have to just repress my energy and force myself to go to work every day. Uh, I can relax. I can have some fun. What a concept. And then you go and you enjoy your karma. Uh, and you finish it. And then when you're finished with it, okay, now it's time for moksha. See, this is all part of adhikar. Adhikar means qualification. You know, if you go for a job interview, they ask you, well, what's your qualification? What's your experience? You have experience in this, that, and the other thing? And if you don't, then get out of here, you know? You're not qualified. So if you want moksha, if, especially if you want meditation, and you don't have the adhikar, what's going to happen? Fall down. See, <laughs> I had this experience when I became a Buddhist monk, that I just breezed through the four uh, stages, the, the four um, paths, and the eight jhanas. I just zipped through them in about three years. Huh? And the other monks didn't believe me. This is the, this is the really weird part. They didn't believe that I was having these experiences. They thought I was lying. Huh? Of course, they're peddling drugs on the street to the local kids to make money. So try to understand the quality of monks. In, in Buddhism today, only stupid people become monks who can't get a job. Any, anybody that has any intelligence goes into business and makes money. So the monks are all the third and fourth class students. So these guys couldn't believe that I was zipping through all this stuff and realizing it like in a few months or a few years. Because they've been trying their whole life and not getting anywhere. Why? They're repressing their sex desire artificially. Or in some cases, they're not repressing it. <laughs> so anyway... Don't be like that. Don't cheat yourself. Get the adhikar. Then you can go to the higher stages. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. Uh, I've seen it here when people come from the West and they try to meditate. And they just completely fail. But what do they do? They go outside the temple and hit up some, some chick for a date. Because what, what else is there? If I can't meditate, I might as well enjoy, right? See, these are the laws of nature. And if you follow them, you'll meet with success. If you try to go against them, well, nature is a lot bigger and a lot stronger than you are. So, Aung Tatsa. Aung Harihi Aung.